Hey and welcome, this is Lee Waller and I am working in Unreal Engine 5.6 Motion Design Tools. I'm going to take a look at creating this motion background here using cloners, effectors, some materials, and lighting. So let's jump in. So I'm in my normal UI for motion design in Unreal Engine. If you're not sure how to set this up, I do have a tutorial that you can take a look at. That'll set up so that we have our motion design outliner, the details, and the operator stack. And we'll have these motion design tools over here. I've also added in these defaults so that we have lighting and a camera. For this project, I'm going to leave the background black. And then I'm going to start with a simple ellipse shape. So I'm going to go over here to the motion design tools, 2D shapes, and double click on the ellipse. That drops in that first ellipse that we're going to need right there. And I'm going to make a few changes to this in the outliner right here. Make sure that's selected. Then we can jump into the details tab right there and we'll move down. I'm going to leave all of this as is right here at the mesh size. I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to set that from 100 just down to 10. I'm going to leave the material at a simple I'm going to leave the material type set to simple for right now. We will come back in a little bit and make a new material for this, but I will go ahead and change the color of this. Click right there and the hexadecimal I have for this is 001C4FFF. And after we change that color, let's select use two-sided material. We're going to wrap the ellipse into a cloner. So let's go over here to our motion design tools. Go to cloners right there. Let's double click on the circle cloner. And it adds in that cloner for us right there. So you'll see the cloner in the motion design outliner. Let's open that up and we're going to get rid of that default cube right there. Just select it and hit delete. Now we can drop the ellipse down into the cloner. Just grab the ellipse and draw it down to the cloner. You'll see it wrap around it like that and just let go. Now that ellipse is a child of the cloner and that is the object that it is cloning. Let's take a look at the details for this and we'll make a few adjustments to the cloner. And let's drop down here to, first let's deselect orient mesh and then we're gonna change the plane from XY to YZ and that will set us on the correct plane. We can make some more adjustments to the layout here. We'll leave it at circle and let's bring the count up to 200. And then the ring count, we'll bring it up to 60. And let's drop the radius down to 10. I'm gonna skip angle start, but I'm gonna go to the angle ratio. I'm gonna make a very odd adjustment to this, but this number worked out pretty well. It just was a random number that I eventually landed on. I'm gonna set it to 5.5. Two, three, five, four, two. We don't see much change with that, but the next thing we want to do is jump down to the range and let's enable that. And we're going to make one adjustment here on the scale minimum and let's set that to zero. Now we're getting that very random look for this background. I'm going to make some adjustments to the sequencer. I'm going to go here and change this to 24 frames per second. And then I'm going to add some time to. The sequencer. I'm going to set that to 240 right there and then and set the end of the sequence to the 240 mark right there. So that means I've got 10 seconds of time in this sequence. I'm going to animate this now and I'm going to use the rotation here to animate this. Now you can come in here and work with this however you want to. Based on the speed that I was looking for, I'm just going to adjust this rotation by about 22.5 degrees on the roll right here. I'm going to jump back to the beginning of the timeline and let me set that back to zero and set the first keyframe. I'm going to click the little diamond right there. That sets the transform property for rotation right there in the sequencer. And then I'll jump to the end of the sequencer and I'm going to set that to 22.5. And then I'll click the diamond again to set that second keyframe. I'm going to select both of those keyframes and I'm going to make them linear so that there's no easing on this. And now we can jump back to the beginning and hit the play. 
And again, you can adjust that timing to whatever your preference is. Now we'll add some effectors to the cloner to create some space and just deform this a little bit more. There's a couple of ways of adding in the effectors. I think probably the easiest is just to go into the cloner, go to the details, and then we'll drop down here and you'll see effectors and we can easily create a linked effector. Just click on that button right there and that adds in the effector and opens up the effector in the details panel. So I'm gonna leave the location and rotation and scale as is. We'll leave this enabled. We'll leave the magnitude as is. I'm gonna change this color to white. Drop that down and hit okay on it. And now we'll go down into the shape properties. We're gonna leave it at sphere. And I'm gonna go ahead and so that you can see how this effector is going to affect this clone. I'm gonna drop down here to this scale right here under mode and set that to zero. So you can see that within this effector, we have the inner radius, which is the red part, and the outer radius, which is the blue part. You can see that it's going from a zero scale, affecting all of the circles, to the outer part, the 200 radius right here, to fully scaled. So we can adjust this area by using the inner radius, and then also the outer radius if we want to. I'm gonna reset those. And then I'm gonna make one more adjustment right here on the easing. I'm gonna change that from linear to this in and out quarter right there. And then I'm gonna bring this radius right here, this outer radius up to 300. That just kind of sets the space that I wanted right here. Again, all of this is up to your preference. If you want to hide these visualizers, you can go in here to the advanced right here underneath effector and deselect these two boxes. Now I'm gonna add in another effector. So let me go back to my cloner right here and then go into details and I'll drop back down to that same area and I'll add in another linked effector. I am gonna jump back in here and I'm gonna label these real quick. I'll label this as the center effector and then I'll label this as left effector. So with this left effector selected, I'm just gonna drag it over and kind of position it over in this area somewhere, just again, this is just preference, what I wanted to kind of create. And we'll need to go into that effector and make some changes. So back into the details for it, I will change this color again to white. And then down here under shape, I'll leave the shape at sphere and the easing at linear. I'm gonna drop down the inner radius to zero. And again, just preference, I'm gonna set this outer radius to 170. And we'll make an adjustment right here on the mode. This time from going from offset, we're gonna change that to cull. And then we'll invert the type right there. And so now you can see that we are changing this little area and you can make adjustments to that however you want to affect that. And so feel free to work with that and see what you get. I'll go up here and turn the visualizers off for that. And then I'm gonna add in one more. So back into the motion design outliner, select the cloner, go to details right here and drop down and we'll create another linked effector. We're in that effector and let me go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and label this right effector. Back into my details and we'll make some adjustments to this. I'm gonna bring this one over and down just a little bit. and maybe just adjust the outer radius to 170 there. And we'll go ahead and invert the type there. And we'll drop that to cull also. And that inner radius, I'm gonna drop it down to zero. And I will go back over to my left effector and drop that back down to zero on the inner radius there. Back into the right effector, and I'm going to turn those visualizers off. And so you can just adjust these however you want just to get the look that you might want on this. You can add more in or not even use them at all. I'm gonna add one more effector on this that's going to really help create the animation. So I'm gonna go back into my cloner, go to the details and drop down to create linked effector there. And it drops that effector in. 
And I'm going to go ahead and label this one as unbound. Make sure it's selected, go into the details for it, and we'll make some changes here. I'm going to go up here to the location and I'm going to set this one to a negative 0.1. And on the rotation here on the pitch, I'm going to set that to 90. I'm going to drop down now to the shape here. And on the shape, we're going to go from sphere to unbound. That way we're not constrained. It's going to cover the entire area. Under mode right here, I'm going to change this from offset to procedural. And this is going to allow us to animate this effector. I'm going to leave it on curl noise. And on the location strength, I'm going to leave it at zero. On rotation, this is how we're going to kind of get this motion, is we're going to slightly rotate these on two axes. So on the rotation strength, I'm going to set the pitch and the yaw to 22.5. It's not animating yet, so we need to go down here to our pan and on the same Y and Z right there, we'll need to set that to 50 and then bring our frequency up to 10. By using the unbound mode, again, we are covering the entire area and then using the procedural and this curl noise, it is actually animating that noise through all of the circles based on how we're telling it to. We're not using location to move it, but we are using the rotation of these little circles, slightly rotating them as the noise passes through. And then based on the pan and the frequency, we're getting a certain amount and a certain speed. So now we have animated the effector and we've also animated the cloner. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to look at a couple of more ways to get more out of this by using lighting and materials. So the next thing I want to do is create a material for our ellipse. Back in the motion design outliner, let's select the ellipse, go into the details. We can always come back to this simple material. Right now I'm going to click here and I'm going to go to material designer and create a material with the material designer. I'm going to start with the PBR and hit continue. Under the base color right here, I'm going to select it and I'm going to change this type from a texture to a solid color. And then I'm going to change this color right here. I have a hexadecimal for it. 0097FFFF. Hit OK on that. And then I'm going to go into the roughness here. Select the base color right there and let's jump down to the texture and let's change that to white. Let's just find a white square texture. Then let's go over to metallic right here and we'll do the same. Make sure that base layer is selected and we'll select white for this. And again, just the square texture there will work. And what that's going to allow me to do is go into my channels here and let me kind of move this around a little bit so we can see it. And I can work with the roughness and the metallic on this. For this first one, I'm going to set the roughness to 0.1 and I'm going to leave the metallic at one. I'm going to slide this over so we can take a look at it. And so now you can see that the lighting in the scene right now is having a more direct effect on all of the ellipse, all of the circles, because the material we have created is more of a metallic material. So it's much shinier and reflecting the light a lot more. There's a few options on the lighting. I'm going to jump into the motion design outliner and we'll open up the default scene here. We have two lights in here. One is the directional light and then one is the skylight. You can see how both of the lights affect this. And again, you can get all types of different looks from this based on what you do with the lighting and the material. So right now I have just the directional light on. We can bring that skylight back in and cut the directional light off. And I'm back in that material and you can play around with the adjustments between the roughness and the metallic also. So right here with the metallic, I'll set that down to 0.5 and you kind of see it dulls it out a little bit. You can bring the roughness up 
Again, just making these slight adjustments will create many different looks. I'm going to set this back to one on metallic and then set this back to point one. And I'm going to explore another way of creating a different look with colors on this. I'm going to close out the material designer. And like I said, we're going to go back to the ellipse and let's go to the details. And I'm going to change this from material designer back to that simple. And we go back to our, our original look. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here into the motion design outliner and I'm going to turn the skylight off. And I'm going to go to my directional light here, select it and go to the details. And then we can go to the light color right here and we can begin to adjust it. And you'll see that we can begin to create many different looks with this also. I'm going to select that color, jump out real quick, and then I'm going to go back to my intensity here and bring up that intensity. And so now you have the option to kind of choose between a couple of colors that you might want to use on this. So between the directional light color and also the color of the ellipse that you're using, you can create a different color scheme. So there's a lot of options on this. I'm going to add now the text in for a final look. So I'll go here to actors and double click on the text actor, go into my motion design outliner and select that 3D text right there. And I'll drop down to details and I'll change this from Roboto to this agency YB font right here. And I'll leave it on that and type in my text. And to add a second line to this, I'm going to hold down shift and then hit enter. And then we can click and I want to bring this up a little bit more. And so let me drop down to my line spacing right here and we'll bring that up a bit. And you can do whatever you want to on the text, however you want to lay that out. I'm going to make sure my scale is locked there and I'm going to bring this up to 1.3. Just make that a little bit larger and you'll see that the text is intersecting with the rotation of those circles. So I'm going to bring the text forward just a little bit. I'll go into location right there on the X axis and set that to a negative two right there just to get that out in front of everything. And let's take a look at that. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. For more on motion media design, hit the like and subscribe button and check out my other tutorials.